day everyone my name is Esther Jeffanose and here on my youtube channel I talk about fakes marriage dating and um, relationship generally okay here with me is my okay husband my name is <laughs> Jeff Anose is super exciting to be here today <laughs> all right so this video is is born out of our anniversary week so we are here to share three basic things that we've le learned over the past three years of our marriage all right and i hope you find something here interesting please don't forget to subscribe all right so i'll start number one thing that has really helped me a great deal for these past three years of our marriage is understanding the office called the husband all right the husband is it's an office in itself so i get to imagine you have a boss in your office all right you don't get to treat him anyhow so i have that understanding that see he has an office in this home and i have to oblige to him i have to bring respect to him all right i have to honor him so with that in mind i don't get to sometimes when he's super annoying sometimes when he had done something that is very annoying i don't go around behaving like a child or a papa I, I i just calm down find a best way when i have to talk to him and we have a better understanding of what happened so that has really has really saved me a great deal most times you just be like oh i didn't know i didn't know and that will get sorted out so i always approach him knowing that he has an office and is in, he is the husband of this home so over to you okay yes speaking about that um it's yes she can be annoying sometimes very annoying right so but this brings me to my own point of the things lessons i've learned and this goes to young men especially but also ladies as well because the two right are becoming one right yes, yes, awesome yes. So now it's important you marry someone you are attracted to physically, emotionally, and psychologically, and otherwise. But I'm talking about the physical attraction here right now. It's very important. Okay. The the thing is when when God brought Eve to Adam, what did He say? Uh, let me paraphrase in my own words. He'll be like, "Wow, she's beautiful, right? <laughs> How did I know?" Now, if you read the Bible in the book of um, Genesis 6 or so, the Bible recorded that the, the women of the earth, they were so beautiful that the sons of God could not keep their eyes off them. If you notice this story about the Nephilims and all of that, they literally came down to earth to be with these women. I mean, who give birth to those women? <laughs> it had to come from a beautiful woman, right? So that is very important, guys, because time will come when um, she gets very annoying, like she just said, you know. And sometimes when you just look at, behold her beauty, you know her physique, you know what I'm talking about? And then you just calm down, like, you just calm down. All right, so it's very important to, to marry someone that you're very attracted to. Okay, did you hear that? <laughs> All right, so my number two point is when we are getting ready to um, get married, or when we are preparing to get married, one of the, the days we are discussing, we told ourselves, see, one of the things we have to abide, in fact, wrote it in one of our preparation book that we don't have to go to bed angry. So whatever it is that he does to me or I do to him, we have to sort it out before we go to bed. And he always explained this to me that he, that most times, if you don't, the devil plants it as a seed and it keeps growing, it keeps growing. And before you know it, you wake up to see a monster. Like you are so angry that you can't stay with this person. Yeah. All right. So now we are in marriage. I started off on that note, don't forget. <laughs> but what happened is that sometimes I can't bear it. So I am angry about something. I get to carry my face. Up ar around the house, just ask him what do you have to eat, what do you want to eat. I'll give it to him. All right. So do you want water to bathe? Uh, that's what I kept doing. In fact, he calls it housemate. We we turn to become housemates. All right. So, but sometimes when 
he most of the time will call me like the what is it right but now i have come to understand better so whenever a little issue props up i just try and sort it out immediately all right there is beauty in that in fact as a lady you will become super happy in your your relationship in your marriage all right you don't have to bottle it up you don't have to go to bed crying you don't have to go to bed weeping all right and don't forget to pray most times i get so difficult yeah. all right i remember then also that he, he needed to move i told him i was not going to get married with him staying in a self-contained all right so somehow he said no and i just left it i didn't push it further and then he came back one day and told me that he met one of his mentors and his mentors advise him that he should at least get an apartment and that was it it's sort of a question for me imagine i have to go oh no no if you're not going to do this we are not no marriage and all it doesn't make sense all right so always talk about issues as it comes up all right don't go to bed angry it will plant this seeds of discord as the time keeps going yeah. and you don't want to know the outcome trust me <laughs> right so it was your okay, so yeah, don't plant seeds of discord. That's very important, guys. So that also leads me to my second point, which is, I mean, I think you should make up your mind, both emotionally and physically, to get married. Make up your mind. Yeah. Because most times, most people go in with the mindset of, okay, let's see if it will work. Mm -hmm. Or let's see, if, let's see, let me, let's just go and try. All right? And then when things like this come up, it becomes something they now call irreconcilable differences, right? When it was just simply two people that were looking for a perfect, they were looking for perfection in each other, all right? And when they now got into the marriage and they didn't see it, okay, it begins to grow, all right? It begins to grow. You don't talk one day, you don't talk two days, you don't talk three days. It begins to grow, grow, grow. And what happens is the devil just needs that crack. It doesn't need a big hole. It just needs that crack. All right? And guess what? Sometimes, at the end of the day, when you, when you take a look at it, what really happened, you don't realize that it was just something that could be talked about over dinner or, or sex or something. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that, you know. So I think, I think that it's very important that you make up your mind. Because the, the truth about the matter is that we are two humans co with coming from different backgrounds, mm. having lots of years of experience, mm. all right? And we're now bringing these, our experiences, into marriage, right? We now, now have to grow and share our lives together and share our space together, right? And so things will come up from time to time. That is basic, all right? However, when you've made up your mind, you're determined that you're in this for the long haul. You're, in, you're determined that you are here to make this work. Yeah. Then it works. Alright? It does not work when you don't work it. Word. Punchline. <laughs> Alright, so my number three point is um, approach your husband or your wife from his or her point of strength. All right. Most times we tend to forget that this person is really good in this area, good in this area, good in this area. All right. So why am I saying this? Sometimes you get to see women who their husband have um, strength in being responsible, providing for the home front. They will now start comparing him to, oh, I want him to stay in the house and take care of the children and sit with me as I'm talking in the as I'm as I'm cooking in the kitchen and all that. No, you don't do that. Find a strength. Find the strength in your spouse and hold on to it. Like live with him based on that form of strength. If you don't, you always find him, find him annoying, you always find him, ah, you're not good with this. Meanwhile, he's good in other things you are really neglecting. Yeah. So it's really helped me. <laughs> During our first year in marriage, I had given birth to our first baby and then um, he's an entrepreneur and I get to go to work and come back. So sometimes I now have to stay at home and he always, he has his office in the home, alright, so he gets to enter his office and work. So then I'll feel, oh God, I'm stressed out, I'm burning out and 
I need your help. Can't you see I'm burning out? And he's not coming out to maybe a particular as a particular time. Then I started getting angry. I started I started feeling unnecessarily nagging, like I was shrinking. So, but one day he he always tells me, "You need a help. You need a help." I'll be like, "No, no, 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 no. I don't need a help. I can do this alone." But he was always telling. He was just telling on me already. So when we talked, we talked about this. I realized that this is true. Imagine if he had to go somewhere to work. If he was going doing a nine to five or a seven to five job, would I now come and tell him, "Oh, baby, please come and help me"? Do you understand? So I now started seeing truth in what he's saying. So he drew, derives joy in providing for me and the kids. All right. So and I, I, it is one of his major strengths, and I'm not taking that for granted. So I have to be there for him and understand that since is this then i have to make avenue or other possible ways to make my life better all right so i hope you got what i just said <laughs> awesome 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 okay so my final point i think that's a very serious point she made there on my own end too i tried to see her strength initially when we when we got married i used to wonder why why can't she think of business? Like, why is she not? Why why can't she just sit down and craft the design and let's just push it and make money? You know, <laughs> you know. But over time, I got to realize, I understand that. See, this is not her. She has her strength. Number one, she doesn't give me headache at all. Like, you know how some um, some wives will want we just pressure you to do one thing or do the other thing, but she does not. So. That was a very serious point she made there. And that leads me to my last point, all right, which is, guys, people, husband, wife, intending man, intending woman, hold your ear. <laughs> Be ready to lay down your life mm. for your mm. spouse. See, I mean literally, literally. There are times when I want to have my way. You, you have your will. You want to have your way. And that is normal, all right? At times when I, I want to enforce my will or enforce what I want, mm -hmm. all right, not what we want or what I think is is good for us, right? But what I want, and trust me, it doesn't end up well. It usually goes south, all right, and that is because we are two individuals coming in to make this work, right? But when one person decides to 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 make it all about him or all about her, all right then you're going to have a lot of hitches, all right? The Bible said that, the Bible was, was telling the man, say, love your wife like Christ loved the church. What did Christ do for the church? He laid down his life for the church. That is literal. Like, literally laying that. I mean, laying it down, <laughs> you know? Because the truth is that you need to... People have come into this to make it work, right? And so you have to sometimes, if not almost all the time, let go of what you want for what she wants. Or let go of what he wants for what you want. Except is a case where it's leading to death or you, or it's a life and death situation. I'm not talking about extreme situations here right now. I'm talking about, okay, let me, let me, let me give an example so that it comes home. Now, when we're about to get married, like she just pointed out, I was at the point of my life where I was not earning so much, and a few months to the point where we, we decided to wed, um, I was sacked, I was fired, you know? And so she was now telling me that, oh, babe, we need to get a bigger space, all right? I was standing in a one-room self-contained. For me, it was quite cool place, right? And in my mind, if she loves me, she will die with me, you know? <laughs> you know how guys think. <laughs> you know how Nigerian movie has made us think, right? You know, so long story short, she gave me some points and I spoke to my mentor about it and he buttressed her point, all right? Of course, I, I won't go into the details for want of time of what he said, but long story short, I realized that at that point, she she made some sense, but I was just willing to, I was just trying to be self-centered. My thoughts, my ideas, it has to be what I want, all right? And I wonder what it would have been if I didn't give, you know, if I didn't, if I didn't, if I didn't listen to her. 
and lay down my will for her. Because long story short, it became amazing. Like that literally spiraled to spiraled, I mean, how is the word? Spiraled to where we are today. If we hadn't taken that move, I'm not sure we would have been where we are today. Happy, excited, and in love. <laughs> That's my point, guys. <laughs> all right. Thank Hope you so got much. value from this video. All right. If you did, please don't forget to subscribe. All right. This brings us to the end of this amazing video. All right. So, hope you got a value. Um, please do well to stay on this channel. Amazing topics will be coming your way. Thank you, baby, for coming. <laughs> all right. Bye. Have a good day, guys. Bye for now. <laughs>